Beard. Hi and welcome everyone to another edition of the Fans Talk Wrestling Podcast. FTW is a weekly WWE and TNA discussion where fans talk the wrestling world in all of its laughable glory. This is episode 245 recorded on December 16th, 2014 on FTWLive.com. Tonight is the Drunk Show as well as the final new episode of Fans Talk Wrestling in 2014. Actually, uh, I should clarify, the final live episode i think we're gonna try and release a a few things over the break but uh in the meantime tonight we're gonna be drinking pretty heavily so hopefully you came prepared to do the same uh while that's going out we're gonna be talking about nxt takeover our evolution as well as this past sunday's wwe tables ladders chairs and stairs Plus, the week that was in Lucha Underground and TNA. My name is Garvin. With us tonight is Nick. Say hello, Nick. Hi, guys. And what are you drinking tonight, Nick? Something awful. Uh, That is the Samuel Adams Juniper IPA, and I just tried to chug half the rest of the bottle and I couldn't make it through. That That bad, huh? Well, I mean, most Sam Adams really does taste like you've been felching, so it's kind of... (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm just finishing off the um the winter package that I got last winter. <laughs> so yeah. I have two of those. One of those is the IPA and the other one is the winter lager. And then it, if I do happen to make it through these, I will be drinking uh what is it, Woodchuck Amber Cider. I got a few bottles of those. Woodchuck, um you you may or may not like it. I'm guessing you won't, but we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, we, we will find out. By that point of the evening, though, you might you might be okay. I mean, it comes to the free vagina. So. <laughs> <laughs> but not the kind you would want to use. No, You'd have to no. wear this one. No. <laughs> and not like a hat. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, and, of course, we've got Joe. Say hello, Joe. Hello. And, Joe, what are you, what are you drinking tonight? Uh... Well, since the Lions have a better record than the Cleveland Browns, uh, I'm going to give them a nod because, well, Garvin, I do a better year, and looks yes. like I won this year for Again. a better record. Yes. Uh, but I'm drinking uh, Cleveland whiskey with some Coca-Cola. Cleveland can make a good whiskey. Uh, yeah, it is pretty uh, pretty good, pretty smooth. Um, I'm a fan. Actually, I think the last time I had it was with you, which was like a year ago. It's been a while. Um, all right. Kevin may or may not be joining us. Uh, I know we promoted Kevin to be joining, but he's running late. So we'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> but I am drinking, um, new Belgium fat tire, which is, which is very cool. It's a amber ale. It's one of the new, uh, new hipster brews that have been released in the last year or so. Uh, it's very good. Fat tire is not new. <laughs> Well, yeah. I'm sorry. It's new to Cleveland. It, it this is the first year we've had it, but now it's like and it's now it's everywhere. Like at first it hit the bars, but now it's in uh now it's in Walmart. So it's it's uh jumped the shark. It is pretty excellent. Yeah, that's a New Belgium beer, right? Yeah. Yeah, New Belgium. Um, and then I also have Jim Beam, um, just straight bourbon for when we do shots. If if that happens, I don't know. We'll see. All right. Well, cool. If you're listening live, say hi and leave your thoughts in the comments here on FTWLive.com. If you're on Twitter, you can use the hashtag FTWLive. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave a like and make sure to subscribe. We release new videos throughout the week, not just from us, but also from members of the FTW community just like you. Before we begin, let's drink. A toast to another great year of podcasting gold and for wrestling. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's the APA. Ah. So Awful. this is Nick's first time drinking. Um <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call hops, my friend. <laughs> they suck. And All just right. for the record, yeah. uh Fat Tire was it looks like it was released uh around two thousand six. Alright, well okay, it's new to me. <laughs> it's new to me. Um, all right, well, let's start off with some Lucha Underground. Unfortunately, uh, I was the only one to watch Lucha Underground this week, so just to kind of run down of what, what all took place, uh, we had another new debut of Superfly, which is pretty cool. I really dig 
how they're debuting these new wrestlers and like the immediate impact that they make as far as, you know, we saw this uh, last week with Pimpinella and then this week, uh, Superfly, just fantastic wrestling. Um, also, they, they, they were doing some more video packages, so building up Pentagon Jr., so giving a little insight on his background and everything. Brian Cage, who um, you guys might be aware, uh, he, he competed in TNA a few times. Um, he was a part of the uh, TNA NYC tour, not tour, but uh, series of, of shows that they put out uh, from the Manhattan Center. He, he competed in the, the X Division tournament that they had, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but th- really, what everyone seems to be raving about is the 20-minute-plus main event it was the ladder match between mundo puma and big rick and that was for the a hundred thousand dollars uh really really good match by far this was one of my favorite episodes of lucha underground so if you haven't watched it definitely check it out um it, it's 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 worth the watch it, especially to see how they're handling everything like you, you know there's there's a lot of people complaining as far as you know, uh, from, from both sides of the argument where, you know, just wrestling, you know, and putting on wrestling matches isn't what makes a good program versus the people who are, you know, saying how, you know, just entertainment or just these segments or, you know, fun related things aren't what, what puts on a good product. But overall, Lucha Underground is showing that you can do both very well. So, uh, and having a 20 minute match, Especially considering they're only a 40, 45 minute show, uh, when you erase commercial breaks. Uh, that's a lot of time to give, uh, a story. So really, really, really cool to see. Um, and yeah, I think the, the worst thing that happened this week for me is that, um, you know, I'm getting into the, the groove of Lucha Underground where just like every other great TV show that I got hooked into, whether it's Sherlock or Doctor Who or any of the Star Trek series, like once you start getting into it, uh, you you can't wait for the next episode. And you're like, I can't believe this is over. Like cliffhangers, all that stuff. Lucha Underground does it very, very well. But that was it. So check out Lucha Underground for sure. There's a lot, lot, lot of cool stuff happening. I'm really looking forward to Brian Cage's debut. Yeah, that looks uh that looks like it can be really cool. Like basically what what we wanted to see TNA do, it looks like Lucha Underground is going to take the the gamble and and really give this guy an opportunity to 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 showcase what he could do. Not just a one-off match, but they're building him up in a in, you know, this uh th- these these video packages and uh Really showing that he's not just like a beast, but the the guy can fly as well. So, yeah, I'm hoping they bring on more PWG guys and they they start bringing in Candice LeRae. That'd be pretty awesome. All right, that's Lucha Underground. Let's take a shot. Okay, so let's jump into some TNA real quick. I think it's been three or four weeks since we last talked about TNA. And a lot of uh, major announcements t- uh, took place. The one was that I don't even think we we've talked at all about, which is that they've signed to uh, Destination America. Um, that's going to start on Wednesday, January seventh, which is the the first Wednesday of 2015. I think it's the first week. Let me double check that. Yeah, it's the it's the it's the first big week of uh or the first full week of 2015. So that should be really cool. Um after Wednesday they're going to move permanently to Friday nights. So Friday nights uh it's a bit of a gamble as far as wrestling goes, you know, we've seen SmackDown go over there and kind of uh flail a bit, but there's a lot of promotional material going out there for for Destination America and and TNA. You know that Wednesday show it's not just the it just it's it's not just a nine to eleven, but there's going to be a twelve hour marathon of just TNA promotional stuff. So best ofs, uh, video packages to build up different feuds, like just a a full day of introduction to who TNA is, why they're good, why they're great, and why people should watch them. And then there's an encore. So you've got you've got uh, 
You've got your 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 full twelve hours of a marathon, then your nine to eleven, and then eleven to one a.m. encore of uh, the first impact, which I think that's going to be how it is going to be moving forward. I think there there will always be a, uh, a a second showing of of that week's impact, which would be pretty cool. Outside of that, we also have uh, a new TNA show called um, Impact Wrestling Unlocked, and not a lot of information has been put out about it yet, but it uh, it seems like it's going to be kind of like a almost like a recap show of Impact. So it's going to show like the best moments or the or the bigger storylines that are happening, along with backstage segments, um, new material to kind of continue that that build. So um, that's that's really cool. That's something that Spike TV never gave. TNA, which is a second show, so you know us fans, we don't have to depend on on YouTube. We can we can also watch it. We can also watch it in this format. Um, and then there's more rumors that you know in the first quarter or maybe the second quarter, depending on how things go, uh, we might finally get Explosion, which has been a, a UK only show, which is I think one one new match plus like a like a, an archive match. And then a lot of like backstage segments and and stuff like that. So that should be really cool. A lot, a lot of, a lot of awesome uh, movement from Destination America. It seems like they're totally buying into what TNA is doing, and they're 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 doing whatever they can do to help TNA move forward, which I think is is awesome. And on top of that, uh, PlayStation TNA is going to be able to be streamed on PlayStation. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know if that's going to be available. To people outside of the U.S., I think that was a concern uh, by some of our U.K. listeners. But um, yeah, overall, it just seems like everything's falling into place. Um, especially like that wild, crazy idea that hey, you know, Discovery Channel is putting their programming on Netflix. Maybe TNA could be there as well. So overall vibe, guys, what do you what do you think about this this you know uh, uh, this change this like just the overall movement of going from spike to destination america and all of the the new stuff that's coming because of it It, it's really exciting to me to see a network that's not just interested in pushing tna but excited about it and it probably helps that they've had they've had former relations with eric young with his shows on animal planet and whatnot but I'm really excited that they're getting basically a whole day of TNA programming mm-hmm. to kick things off, introduce new people to the show, and they seem to be handling this transition the way it needs to be. They're easing into the new uh, the new air date, and overall, it, it, it just seems like they're handling things ex- extremely well. I'm personally excited by uh, the, the PlayStation View service. Uh, which will have Destination America on listed channels it offers. And it makes me wonder, they haven't announced the subscription model yet, but it makes me wonder if that will get packaged into PlayStation Plus, which, which is um, Sony's online service. Right. It's a subscription thing. So if they bundle that together, that's opening TNA to an even bigger audience, which, which is, again, just really exciting to me. It's it's It's, it's great. Yeah, I like I like the fact that it's it's opening up all the all those possibilities. I mean, you know, a new show, uh, just being on PlayStation, the PlayStation Network. I I think a lot of services are going. You know, after the WWE Network came out, you know, everyone started at least in the wrestling community started seeing more idea. You know, getting more ideas, and everybody wants to see more ways to get their content without having to change devices or. To be tied to a TV sucks. So I like the fact that, you know, if you're on your PlayStation, that becomes more of a media center. That's cool. Um, I mean, any device you can get Netflix on now, you could, you could essentially get, right? You could get TNA? Or is it just PlayStation they're talking? Uh, as far, as far as the, the, the plan with PlayStation, I think there's a bunch more content available or going to be made available that okay. TNA is a part of. And really, okay. I think it's a Destination America thing, and then TNA is is a part of it because of that. It isn't a a partnership because of you know between PlayStation and TNA exclusively. Yeah, and I mean, and this you know having this break, even for TNA watchers, is going to be good because everybody gets to be refreshed. Everybody gets that break. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I was listening to a podcast earlier today. I was even discussing the 
the same thing, saying, yeah, it, you know, maybe wrestling should get breaks. We've talked about this in the past. Yeah. Uh, just like we're going to take a two-week break, uh, you know, we're going to get refreshed and be ready to come back and be awesome. I, you know, wrestlers might want to do that, and the fans are going to get that, uh, get that chance here. And any changes you're going to make to the TNA program, they're going to they're going to do, and it's going to they're going to come out swinging on on uh, January seventh. So I'm excited. Yeah, and it would be cool to see if TNA uh, continues that model as far as you know working up for most of the year, but taking like a month or two off like they have. I think that would be really cool if they did that. Lucha Underground, I think, is is going to be doing something similar. I think they've only got maybe one or two more episodes. Before they take a break. So, you know, it'd, it'd be nice to see if a mainstream, you know, top level company like TNA, you know, should be or is sort of considered as, you know, to 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 also take that move and do that. That'd be really cool. And it gives us a break. You know, I you know, we need a break. We can't watch wrestling <laughs> so much wrestling like every single week. Uh, that's that's a lot to ask of us. Uh, all right. Well. Let's uh let's go ahead and uh take another shot before we move on to NXT Takeover Our Evolution. All right. Nick, you still with us? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. You didn't die after that shot. I mean I'm totally passed out right now. <laughs> Nick's laying on the that. floor just like <laughs> I'm cool. drooling into the microphone. <laughs> uh, as opposed to every other time we do the show. Yeah, I know, right? All right. So, uh, NXT TakeOver, our evolution happened this past week, this past uh, Thursday. And um, I think really sent shockwaves throughout the, the fan base. Uh, a lot of people are talking about this event, and there's a lot of rumors and... Um, there's a guy on Reddit called like New York Met, New York Mets fan um, who gained popularity by releasing results before they happen, like pay per view pay per view results from within WWE. So, but he's he's coming out and saying like the talent is now on notice, and as far as like on the Raw roster, uh, yeah, I don't know. This uh, it, it was a it was a hell of a pay per view. So let's let's talk about first. We'll just uh, we'll just go over the the results. And then we'll talk about what, what we liked and disliked about it. Um, the, the results were Kevin Owens debuted. Um, to our surprise, had a match. <laughs> so Kevin Owens defeats CJ Parker. Uh, the Lucha Dragons successfully defended the NXT Tag Team Championships against the Vaude Villains. Baron Corbin defeated Ty Dillinger. Hideo Tommy and Finn ba- Balor. <laughs> there you go. Uh, defeated the Ascension. Uh, the NXT Women's Championship was successfully defended by Charlotte against Sasha Banks. And Sami Zayn is your new NXT champion. So, first of all, uh, favorite moments of, of this event? My favorite moment would have to be uh, Balor's entrance. That was amazing. I've seen bits and pieces of what he did on the indies before he came to to NXT, but I haven't seen anything in full like that. Just the the creativity and the creative license they gave him to do this. It, it was an amazing entrance all around. It, just everybody involved sold it so well. The Ascension, the guys that have just been dominating monsters for well over a year now, we're legitimately freaked out by this entrance. That is a great way to build up a future top guy in your company. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you, Nick. That was probably one of the best moments of the show. Um, just for the pure theatrics of it, it worked well. Um, my only thing is I hope they don't try and do this like all the time. Yeah. Especially if he gets called up to the to the main roster, this is not something we want to see all the time because it'll wear on the fans. Then it'll be old hat and everyone's be like, Oh, well, okay, he's gonna do the big fucking entrance, okay. Eh. Like, I agree with you, man. The the creativity was epic. Uh the fact that he incorporated like it wasn't just him. 
it was the entire, it was all the theatrics, all the lighting, all the, you know, the smoke. You know, would he wrap his arms around himself and then flung him out and the light just flashed bright? Like, the entire thing was orchestrated perfectly. Uh, I just really hope they save it for special events. Mm -hmm. Um, But looking outside of that, I mean, what can you not say about, uh, well, 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 I'll just, you know, go to the opener, uh, Kevin Owens. Man, uh, I mean, yeah, that match was a Kevin Owens spot fest. Here's his arsenal. Here's here's his signature moves. We're going to show them to you. There really wasn't much more than that other than his nose getting busted open. (laughs) And... And while I appreciated seeing all his stuff, I'm excited to see him going forward in other matches to see, you know, how he can put together a full match, not just the showcase that it was. But I love the fact that after his nose is broken, I mean, the blood added a great aspect to that match. It just shows that he's hardcore, willing to do just about anything. And later on in the show, you know, we saw him, his nose even stitched up, but still bleeding. Like, it added just a wonderful touch. To help define the care the the guy. Yeah, and it's it's uh it's it's you know it's so weird. We uh we've been kind of uh isolated from blood so much by WWE as of the last I don't know maybe eight eight years five eight years or something like that. It seems like they've they've basically removed blood from from the scene, and NXT um they weren't. <laughs> They, they, they didn't stop the match to clean him up. They let him finish it. That added so much to the story. So this, this whole, this whole idea that blood adds so much to the story, uh, it aids to the match. I, I've, I've refused to really believe that because, you know, while yeah, it did help in certain situations like Stone Cold versus Bret Hart or matches like that, what I didn't want to see was another ECW style um, rebirth of that where every match is blood and you know that's that's the that's the main focal point of basically every single feud but this it just it fits so well just the the you know the the vague understanding that I have of Kevin Steen and again this is this was my introduction to him but just the vague understanding that I that I had of who he was his style his attitude this this totally sold this guy for me so uh but yeah joe i'm 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 with you kevin owens that debut was was fantastic um just just the just the energy uh just the style uh i thought i thought was perfect and um it really shows how much faith that they have in this guy that they they not only give him the the opener to basically show off what he can do to let him have an opportunity to calm his nerves before they introduce him into like the main event story. <laughs> like how crazy is that that like they've got they've got uh Hideo Tommy and Finn Balor who have like so much hype behind that these guys are are like basically floating in the the middle of the card. They're they're doing something that's sure it's important. It's a nice it's a nice story that that they're telling with these guys, but they're not main event guys yet. And Kevin Owens in his debut is a main event guy already. Like, how crazy is that? It's not crazy, though, when you consider um, the fact that that he's worked with Sami Zayn for, I mean, they've had such a storied past just as wrestlers. Yeah, and, it, and oh. it's a past that they're ripping off wholesale, basically. Yeah. I mean, and that's fine. I mean, it's, it's, um, it, it's fine that they're doing that because they, they can tell, uh, a great story and, and they've worked together so well. So a lot of the stuff they've done in the past, they can just redo, uh, makes it easy for them for damn sure. Sure. But, and, and, mm-hmm. and they alluded to it. I mean, they, they, they alluded to the idea that there is this storied path between Owens and, uh, and and Sami Zayn, you know, the the way that they told the story as soon as uh Zayn won the title, how they're they're best friends, that they came up in the business together, so like they had that moment where they embraced quite a few times actually. Um and and then just to turn and <laughs> just to have ha- have him turn like this is something we talked about as a fantasy booking idea. 
Like how how epic would it have been if NXT moved forward with this with Zayn versus Kevin Owens? Like how how perfect would that have been? And they did it. So, um, yeah. So outside of that, for me, um, and, and a lot of people, Charlotte versus Sasha Banks was was definitely also a, a major major highlight. Um, a lot of people are 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 ready to see Sasha Banks versus Charlotte on the main stage. Do you guys agree? Do you think? You think Sasha Banks and and Charlotte, for that matter, are are there are are ready for like that main event uh, roster push? I can see it. I I can see it. Both both of them worked extremely well. They were fantastic. Uh, I, do I think they're going to be called up soon? I wouldn't think so just yet. Uh, I still think they've got a little bit more to do um, because let's be honest, the the main event roster doesn't have the same chops for sure so it's almost like the rest of the roster has to catch up to them yeah i can see charlotte going up pretty soon if nothing else you could put her in a in a program with natalia again just redo what they did down in nxt before it went on the network or no they had that out after it went on the network didn't they um with sasha she's definitely ready for it um Skill wise, as far as her matches go, definitely. I would just hesitate to move her up with Charlotte because I don't know what they would have for her. I don't necessarily see the boss character making it up to the main roster. So I I would just want to see what they have for her once she does make that move up before I want to before I would feel comfortable with her going up. Yeah, I think I mean out of the two, Charlotte definitely will make the bigger impact. But as far as the character goes and, and overall wrestling ability, Sasha can hang up there, uh, for sure. You know, especially compared to what, what we've been used to. Uh <laughs> and we'll talk a bit about that uh when we when we when we cover TLC. But yeah, overall, man, uh I think I think overall that, that feud has been great. The match itself was was very good as well. Uh, here's a, here's a few things you guys said, uh, Robert, in the uh, in the uh, in the Facebook group. He said w- WWE just created a monster, and it's going to be tough for them to top that show. So NXT, uh, again, a lot of hype about NXT Takeover, our evolution. Do you think this event set the bar too high for the next time NXT has a special event on the network? No, I don't think so. Uh... I, it sets a high bar for for sure, but I don't think it's one that they won't have a problem overcoming. Uh, I thought it was a great show, but I think a lot of I mean, a lot of people said they had a lot of criticisms of it, and I guess I didn't really see that. I don't know about you guys, but I thought I thought it was a solid show. I, I've definitely seen bigger screw ups and smackdowns and raws they've let go. Yeah, as opposed to the flubs that we've been seeing on the main, on the flagship shows, both in ring and technical, like, I don't remember watching anybody on NXT have to wait 10 seconds for their music to hit. Um, I could definitely see them meeting this bar every time. Do I expect them to every time? No, there, there's going to be ebbs and flows, there's going to be ups and downs. It was either the last takeover or the one before that wasn't too terribly great in comparison but it was still a very quality show overall it's just it didn't have the sort of the sort of payoff that this particular event did sure and i think that's going to be the only variant in in quality that we'll see is just the impact of the stories being told yeah no i i agree the last last uh nxt takeover wasn't as good as the as the one previous um, this to me, it did set the bar very high. Will I have expectations moving forward? Totally. But that's, that, that's not a bad thing, you know? That's not a thing that can't be overcome. Uh, you know, this, this, this comes awfully close to, uh, Vince McMahon saying, you know, not enough people in this generation are, are reaching up for that, that brass ring. They don't have the, you know, basically what it takes to to get over and the uh, everyone, everyone was went out of their way to make a statement this show. And and it's not just it's not just the but, wrestlers. But yeah, but I mean, if you look at this, though, 
how many of those guys brought in uh, out of the guys we've mentioned? Yeah. How many of those guys brought that gimmick or that talent into NXT that they've developed on their own as opposed to the WWE generated thing that everybody on the main roster had to deal with? I, I think I think that the the problem with the main roster is the fact that it's got to go through the machine. Sure. Uh, that they've had to try and process all this stuff and well, we got to do this, well, we got to do this. I mean, let's be honest, nothing's going to change with the main shows until Vince shakes loose the mortal coil. Yeah, and even then, I'm becoming less and less convinced with each passing day that Triple H would be any different. I, mean, I, I, I just don't see the whole anti-Vince persona that people keep propagating about him. Right, he married the man's daughter, and he's understudied him for going on a decade. How different do you think he's going to be? Well, sure. Well, NXT is his baby, though. NXT is is the difference. So, the well, he doesn't NXT. have much to do with it beyond the overarching scope of it. Like, I don't know, he's, man. He's not in charge of training. He's not in charge of booking. He's he's essentially a figurehead as far as NXT goes. I don't know, dude. Because you listen to any other podcast, you you read any other blog, and people are giving Triple H basically full credit <laughs> for. <laughs> NXT being the way it is, as far as the booking style and allowing these guys to do whatever it takes to to get over. I'm I don't sorry, know. I shouldn't have doubted Russell's own. <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, with it's Vince, like the the fact that Vince doesn't pay as much attention to NXT, they're able to do stuff that makes sense. They don't have Vince rewriting shows. Like, no, that's definitely valid. That's yeah. definitely valid. So I mean, they they can sit there and they can they could book out you know three months in advance, and they work their way backward the way the old they did you know they could have done it old school here, and they know what they want to do and they figure out how what are the pieces we need to put into place in order to tell this story the way we want to tell it. I, I don't know it, it works it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think it's incredibly telling. Um, the latest episode of Art of Wrestling. With with Cabana was with uh, Dr. Tom Pritchard. Pritchard, yeah, right. And he was the head trainer for, or he was a trainer for the WWE for donkey's years. The last thing he did was FCW, and he raised a point that NXT has not created a star yet. The current model of NXT, everybody that we see coming from NXT right now, the Wyatts, the Shield, those guys, they were all built in FCW. So. Yeah, it, it, I think it's just incredibly telling that with the current model we've got right now, they haven't put together that star power yet. I don't like, know. I mean, look at Tyson Kidd. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so real quick, uh, you know, at, because we're comparing NXT and the and the main product, uh, Lou on on the Facebook group posted this Ask FTW, and it it's basically was you know if right now if we swapped rosters so everyone from nxt went up to raw and everyone from raw went to nxt who would be producing the better shows and we're only talking about rosters we're not talking about writing staff or you know the the overall process that writing has to go through on either show what's the better show right now nxt i i could make the argument that if you've got guys like kevin owens Sami Zayn, Finn balor dealing with the guys on the main roster or on the flagship shows with the booking and the agents and all that, you could argue that since they've been on top in other companies and they know what that takes, like WWE isn't all they know, that maybe they'd have a shot at improving things, but that would be very much an uphill battle. NXT is basically designed to let you succeed on your own merits, so it would definitely be a case of the main roster having a much easier time of things, having a much easier time of getting themselves over and telling great stories. I think, I mean, if you're going to, if you're, if you're just swapping the cast, but keeping all the backstage characters and all that, I think NXT is going to still tell a bit better story. Yeah. And I think they've got something that's kicking. Um, and they'll be able to do something with all those guys who already have those defined personalities. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot easier for them because they're like, hey, we, okay, well, this character, let's just shake shit up. And it would be a very interesting thing. You know, we wouldn't have to always deal with John Cena versus whoever's in the main event because John Cena's in the main event. Uh, we don't have to deal with 
Triple H every six months being a main character. Uh, you know, there's just things that we that I think we they'll actually do differently. And Zach Ryder like would be that. a god among men on this show. I, oh yeah, I don't I don't know because you also have to remember, we're, uh, it, you're going from a from a three hour show to a to a one hour show. Hey, if they if they could <laughs> if they could find time previously for Adam Rose on NXT <laughs> and the damn bunny, I think they're going to be okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm with you guys overall. It, you know, to me, it's not just the wrestlers. The wrestlers do a hell of a good job getting themselves over, but it's not, it's not entirely on them. The, the way the writing is done, uh, on NXT is just so much better than Raw, but it's also not drawn out. You've, you, you, you only have an hour versus three hours. So, um, it, it's easier to digest. It's easier to watch and, because of that, the stories you can focus on more, you know. So yeah, I th- I think for me, regardless of what roster is down there, as long as they keep that formula of allowing the wrestlers enough time to do what they need to do to tell a story to get over, uh, you know, that that model is is much much better than the raw model. I mean, I'd be happy if they would just cut raw back down to two hours and use that third hour to show NXT. Totally. Uh, get rid of SmackDown and put NXT up. If you put NXT up on on regular TV, I think for sure that you would have better ratings. Especially if they keep that that style, if they if they keep that that method that they have right now. All right, so um, I know we 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 kind of touched on this, but uh, Leonard, Richard, um, quite a few other people and really the entire internet all saying the same thing which is basically you know why is the developmental company putting on better shows than the big leagues um how does Vince look at raw as the standard when NXT is putting shows on like this um i don't know man i i don't know how <laughs> i don't know how uh how it how it makes sense just seeing the reaction that we're giving NXT Week in and week out, and I know we don't necessarily cover it a whole lot on uh, on the podcast here, but yeah, overall, like just every week, it seems like a new person is raving about the great stories being told on NXT or the great wrestling that's happening on NXT, and no one is saying the same thing about Raw ever. Yeah, well, here's here's the other thing is like you know people are like how can they be putting on a great show with NXT and not do it on Raw? We're only we've only got a small snippet here. Let's let's also take a look at it that way. I mean, Raw is three hours. What would happen if NXT was three hours, especially with their smaller roster? I think booking could stand up to that a lot better than it does in the flagship shows. But how quickly are we going to get stale? You know what I'm saying? Like, how long if you if you had three hours for NXT on a weekly basis, and we're not even considering the SmackDown contingency here, but I mean, if you if you bumped it to equal Raw. I think you're going to end up with a lot of the same problems. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe the, some of the in-ring work's going to be better. It's going to be fresh for a while, but you're still filling three hours. You're doing a pay-per-view a night, a full pay-per-view, not a not an NXT two-hour show where they have four or they have what five matches. You're getting another hour every week, or actually, compared to NXT now, you're getting another two hours every week. I think I think you're going to end up. I think in the long run, you're going to see a lot of the same problems work up. I, I definitely see where you're coming from, and if they keep the same booking style, whether it's Raw or NXT, yeah, if you just extend it without adapting anything, that's going to start sucking soon. The problem, though, has never been roster depth. The WWE has never utilized this roster effectively. There have always been people that have just been fallen by the wayside who don't get used, whereas big shows in six of ten segments of the night. With NXT, I see that being less of an issue just because they do have such a wide roster depth. If they barely use any of the tag teams they've got right now. I don't know if if Scott Dawson is hurt again, but they've got the mechanics for a tag team. Right. Uh, Dawson and Dash Wilder, they've got Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger, they've got a few different tag teams that they could use to fill a spot. More Divas matches, more singles guys. Like those two guys that were in the in the snapshot with um, Balor soon after he debuted, the two giants with the massive hands. Bring them in. Like You could definitely fill up 
that time very effectively. It's just the WWE has always been ass at it. Yeah, I mean, just look at NXT Takeover, and you know, it, and let's 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 be let's be fair. It wasn't absolutely perfect. Uh, there were quite there was a bit that wasn't worth having on TV, but overall, everything is telling the story. Everything means something. Raw, you don't have that. There's joke segments. There's filler matches. There's Matches that are, are just booked to be booked because you've got to fill the time, like Kane versus uh, Adam Rose this week. Like, what What? What the hell was that? Like, why do you hey, need hey, that? Hey, we can't knock that because Jimmy Jacobs was part of the Exotic Express this week. <laughs> I don't know. It just, like, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's not needed. So, yeah, I don't know. But the three-hour model, what Raw is doing, um, will never work. I don't think even even if they even if they swapped writing staffs, there's no way that that the NXT writers can fill three hours worth of time because honestly, no one has three hours worth of time to watch Raw. We yeah, don't I, want I, this. Yeah, I, I think the thing that the, the best thing about NXT is it gives us something, and and Lucha Underground does the same thing. It gives us something and it leaves us wanting more. Right. There wasn't enough time. Where with Raw. Fuck, we want we want this we want a whole hour at least removed from the show. Yeah, at least. At least. I, I mean, I'd go for a whole ninety minutes. Just get rid of it. Hour and a half show. When was the last time Raw had a cliffhanger that was actually cliffhanger worthy? Can you remember one? Nineteen ninety three. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time since like Raw ended. And you're like, wow, I can't believe they did that. I can't wait till next week. It's been, it's been, I, I think that the last time that happened was before we started the podcast, which was I, five years I, no, ago. No, I take that back. Uh, I think, I think it was, uh, way, I think it was around like episode like 24 of the podcast. Okay. What happened? Well, we, we had, we had, we had Harrison, we had Kevin, we had, hell, I think we had Scott at the time. What, I don't remember. What just, happened? I just rem- didn't matter. We were all excited. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sure it's happened. I'm sure. I'm sure there has been a cliffhanger, but as of late, I, I can't think of a single one. Yeah, it's been a long time. Um, so uh, this is being talked about in the live chat. Um, our our friend Dave Gilbert, he did a uh, he did a a conversation or an interview. Oh, that's what it was. It's when the Nexus debuted. Yeah, right. When the when the Nexus took over. Okay. Yeah. yeah sure. I I'm I'm with you. That was a cliffhanger. Because I was like, "Holy crap! Look at the look at the risk WWE is taking right now." What do you mean Daniel Bryan got fired? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, overall, uh, like Vince Russo sat down with with David Gilbert this week of t- of the Talk TNA podcast, and and even he is saying like watching Raw is the worst part of his week. Even though he he's obligated to do it because he decided to start this website just like we decided to start a wrestling podcast. I I'm I'm in agreement with him. Like watching Raw <laughs> I lost count how many times he mentioned his website though. Well yeah he yeah he's I, I only listened he's to the first twenty minutes course. and it was probably about fifty. It was a good conversation for sure. If you if you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's it's a good conversation. Uh I find myself agreeing with, with Vince Russo the more I hear him talk. But, uh, but yeah, still, still the, the, just the, just the idea that raw watching raw is the worst part of your week. I, I feel that sometimes. Well, a obviously there's not enough swerves on raw. True. Uh, let's see what else was talked about by you guys. Uh, Michael Kupak said that he thought Finn Balor's, uh, th- that the entrance was very cool. Uh, but overall he doesn't see that really translating well in front of, a raw audience or in front of the main roster pay-per-view audience. Do do you do you agree with that? Do you think that the uh the special event version of Finn Balor has a place in WWE today, especially on a pay-per-view like TLC or Royal Rumble or anything like that? It absolutely has a place. It has to be special event worthy, but yeah, definitely. This has gotten over on big stages before. It's gotten over in Japan. It's gotten over all over. So this idea that it wouldn't work in the WWE on the main stage when they've got the Usos 
Los Matadores, um, other other people and teams that may or may not be jokes. I mean, the Usos aren't treated as a joke. Yeah, it's it's definitely possible for Balor to transition that over on the main stage, especially since he's got the name Finn Balor in the first place, which loosely translates to King of Demons. Like, that's exactly what he was role-playing as when he came out on TakeOver. He was Balor. So, yeah, absolutely. Joe, what do you think? I definitely think that Finn Balor's got a place in WWE. But as Nick said, it's got to be special events for him to do this stuff. I mean, granted, he's a tremendous worker, uh, and I think he needs to show more of that off um, in the weeks now that we've now that we've seen the epic, uh, the epicness that is the you know the Finn Balor pay per view character, the demon. Uh, we need to get we need more of the character without the makeup. Like to show his talent, we need we need him to be a well defined gimmick or well defined guy outside of the paint. That can't be his definition. That can't be like the heart of the character. If it is, he's done because that's all people are gonna want. Granted, we people are gonna want that. Don't get me wrong. I want to see the next time he comes out, but I hope it's some time away. That way, it makes it special. I want to see him wrestle and kick ass and be a defined character, and then use that as, like, the garnish on the side. But I think it'll work. On, I, it'll work definitely uh, on the big stage if done right. Yeah, and this isn't, like, something that we've never seen before. Uh, I mean, the pain... Oh, don't bring Jeff Hardy into this. This is not a Jeff Hardy thing. No, no. I actually wasn't going to make that. Damn right it's not! <laughs> Do not bring <laughs> fucking Jeff Hardy anywhere near me! <laughs> Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin's here. Hi, 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 how you doing, Kevin? I'm hitting from the bottle after a 12-hour day. Well, go ahead. What What are you drinking? Tell us. Let us know. Uh, a vodka. Stoli. Oh, I was really hoping for Crown Royal again. Yeah, I, I didn't. <laughs> again, 12 hours, and I didn't have time to get to the liquor store to go pick some up. So that's so on me. It, so so it's it, like, oh, I have this bottle of vodka. I'm going to drink out of the bottle. Is it vanilla Stoli? It is not vanilla Stoli. Thank it's just God. vanilla Stoli. I thought that's okay. all they made was vanilla Stoli. Usually no, that's... It, believe it or not, it's regular Stoli. <laughs> uh, all right, I wanted to like, I wanted to absolute rage when you mentioned Jeff Hardy, so uh, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but, you know, there was this like full-blooded hatred. <laughs> Well, I I wasn't going to make that comparison. I can see that sort of as a comparison, but my comparison was actually going to be on the other hand. Uh, well, no, my my <laughs> Jesus Christ, guys, <laughs> my comparison was Rey Mysterio. Every every special event that he did, he wore a different mask. There was yep. like that Royal Rumble or something. There was something big where he had like the big feather big thing going on. Uh. Yeah, where he looked like Big Bird. Yeah, man, like, like that's that's that. It works. It worked for the for the crowd. The crowd was into that. Uh, you know that that I'm just trying to remember like Rey Mysterio's DVD. That was something that he, that he talked about a lot, where he wanted to look different or have a different mask for every special event that that he did. So yeah, I I totally think this this can work. I don't I don't get the the idea that you couldn't do something like this on a big scale. Hey guys, Big Show just turned. Ah, oh, really? What? <laughs> oh, it just turned back. All right, uh, freaking, <laughs> freaking live SmackDown. Uh, all right, so that's. I forgot that time. Yeah, this that's is the fourth segment of the night. <laughs> Uh, so that was NXT TakeOver, Our Revolution. Uh, most, most likely, it is in your top five events of the year if you watched it. Um, what would you guys say? Is it, it was it at the top or near the top of of your? Favorite events this year? Definitely. That, yeah, of all the ones show. I've seen. Yeah, uh, of all the ones I've seen, definitely it's sitting right there at the top. Okay. I, I'm with you. And I I thought that I was making a mistake, um, because I delayed watching NXT until like a couple of days before our pre-show. <laughs> but I watched like four or five episodes like two days straight, and um, I'm so glad that I did it that way because I was like so into what what they were telling the story that they were telling and then getting that like major payoff for so many different storylines was just amazing so yeah it's definitely up there for me as well 
All right, so that's NXT TakeOver. Let's uh, let's go ahead and take another shot before we head into TLC. Man. And that was straight from the bottle. <laughs> oh, bad. Oh. No chaser. That uh, that beam. Great no chaser. Oh, Kevin's doing acapella. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> that's a second one just for good measure. Mm. Oh, God. Well, that's that's good. That's good, Kevin, because you're you're uh, you're a few minutes late to the, I know. To the show. I did have so. some catching up to do. I agree, Garvin. <laughs> you 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 are 100 percent correct there. Um, I might have passed the uh, the mark, so we'll see how this next segment goes. But, <laughs> um, all right. So WWE tables, ladders, and chairs. Um, obviously there was there was a lot of negativity overall going into the pay per view. Not a lot of people looking forward to it. I personally was not looking forward to it, even though I w- was going to the pay per view. Um. I, I I got tickets like an early Christmas present from my brother. Uh, bought bought me tickets to TLC, and um, it was a it was a weird feeling because like a I, you know I'm glad he was thinking about me, you know, but like I just like had made the mental decision that I'm never going to a WWE event again. Um, after Money in the Bank, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, dude, it's a new day. Yeah, overall, uh. <laughs> This was a good. This was a good live event. Uh, and I don't know. I I know it. I know it came off differently uh, on TV, and there were some lulls. But let's let's go over the, the the card. We'll we'll talk about what you guys said about it, and then we'll go over our favorite moments or our you know the worst moments and et cetera, et cetera. So overall, uh, we had a kickoff match. It was New Day versus uh, Golden Stardust. New Day won. Um, interesting note, and I just want to, I just want to throw this out there, but a new day got booze in Cleveland. Uh, everyone was behind gold to stardust. I was really surprised about that considering how things had gone before that and after that, but just throwing it out there. Uh, we had the IC title, Luke Harper lost to Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler is now your intercontinental champion. Uh, the tag team championships were defended successfully by Miz and Miz Dow against the Usos. Uh, Eric Rowan lost to Big Show in a stairs match. Cena defeated Seth Rollins in a tables match to uh, retain his number one contendership for the WWE Championship. Bullshit. Uh, (laughs) Nikki Bella uh, retained the Divas Championship against AJ Lee. Ryback defeated Kane in a chairs match. Rusev retained the U.S. Championship against Jack Swagger, and Bray Wyatt defeated Dean Ambrose via television in a TLC match. So overall, um, favorite favorite moments of of the night, guys. Oh, uh, I mean, Miz and Miz were great against the Usos. Uh, that was that was great. Um, I mean, hell, favorite moment of the night. Uh, I initially didn't see the ladder match. I got I got home late. I was out of town with the wife, so I picked up at Miz and Miz Dow. That it, I think, oh. to be honest, I <laughs> go ahead, continue. Sorry, oh. you you missed like the best match of the night. But go ahead. I know I I did watch it the <laughs> next day, but I'm thinking back to when I watched 99 percent of the show. Okay. Uh, the fact that Eric Rowan and Big Show did the best they could with that stairs match, uh, they definitely deserve props for that because what a terrible gimmick. It, seriously, we pepper on a pole here or what? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the gimmick was terrible. They did the best they could. Uh, the shocker one to me was Eric Rowan losing that. Yeah. Because I... uh, Why? Why did we need a big show win? He's not relevant. He's not going to continue to be relevant. You say that, but Ross, it felt like he was pretty relevant. They're forcing. <laughs> did you see Big Show try to run to the ring in the last few weeks? Is that uh, a run? He, yeah, he tried to run and slide underneath the bottom rope. Yeah, no, that wasn't a run. Uh I think my great grandmother can make it there faster, and she hasn't been with us for at least ten years. I just 
I I really want to like Big Show. Like I, outside the ring, I think he'd be a great dude to hang out with. But yeah, no. It, no matter even if he goes away for six months and comes back and he's like ripped, you know, like he, he's in he's in like really good shape. Yeah. And he just loses it in the next three weeks. It's like he goes on a binge of like cheeseburgers and and just wait. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's just he just gets he he becomes the Michelin man and slows down. That tour life though. Yeah. Stay buff Michelin man. Nick, your your favorite uh thing that happened. Uh, and John Cena probably says there's one thing that could never destroy us. It's Big Show. And then he turns on him every time. <laughs> Uh, it's a strong tie between the IC title match and the majority of the tables match. Those are two both really great matches. Um, I would I'd probably give it to the to Harper versus Ziggler because the tables match was not ruined, but we didn't need Big Show coming out and we didn't need Reigns coming out and we didn't need all that garbage interference. So. Yeah, Harper and Ziggler just knocked it out of the damn park. I was glad to see Ziggler win the title back, though. I mean, I don't, I don't think it hurts Harper too much, but now can he carry it? That's always the issue with Ziggler. What is he going to do now? Can he actually make it happen? I mean, we've seen this story before, but I'm glad they gave him another shot. So I was pretty happy to see that. Yeah, overall, uh, I'm, I'm I'm with you there, Kevin. I mean, like we always hope that the uh, the next IC champion is going to be the guy who really makes that title worth something, um, and we really hadn't seen that. We, we didn't see that for the entire Harper reign. Uh, we really didn't see that the last reign that Ziggler had. It seemed like it was second fiddle at maybe. It was just kind of like just just floating. <laughs> Kind of like uh, just just off to the side, not 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 even important. So hopefully, hopefully, yeah, Ziggler's reign, this this new reign, does well. But overall, that match, that that match was a fantastic match to open the pay per view with. If only they, uh, they 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 continued that momentum. And unfortunately, uh, for for the live crowd, it didn't seem like they 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 did. Um, I I. I made some just general notes of how much the the crowd was involved in certain matches. So, you know, the 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 IC title match, it seemed like the entire arena was into that match. The same thing for Miz and Mizdow versus the Usos, which might come surprising because I, I rewatched the um I rewatched the pay-per-view uh this this afternoon just just on the network and it, it didn't really come over as such, but the crowd was really into Mizdow. Booze for the Usos, booze for the Miz, but you really didn't hear anything like that over over the network for whatever reason. I don't know why they why they turned the crowd down. The crowd was definitely up for uh, the IC title match, but for some reason they, they 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 turned it down then. And really, the only other match that the crowd, the live crowd, got into as far as collectively the entire arena uh, was Cena versus Rollins, the 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 tables match. The ending, I think, kind of irked a lot of people, but for the majority of the of the event or the the match, a lot of people were into that match. Now, but that's also that's also your uh, let's go Cena, Cena sucks chance, which I'll never get. <laughs> but uh, yeah, overall, I think I think for me, my my match of the night was was the IC title match. It was fantastic live. It was fantastic watching it back. It was amazing that Luke Harper did not break his arm when he when he dove out of the ring. Yeah, that that hurt me to watch. That was <laughs> man. Uh I I made the mistake of trying to live chat while experiencing the pay-per-view, so I had my head down trying to chat in the Facebook group while that while that moment happened, so I missed it and they didn't show any replays. I didn't watch it until this afternoon. <laughs> That was brutal. <laughs> All right, so uh, some things that 
You guys said uh, Ziggler versus Harper match of the night. There's a good thing Ziggler was wearing the extra thick knee pads. I'm sorry, this this comes from a man deep uh, on Google Plus, and he said it was a good thing Ziggler was wearing his extra thick knee pads because there were some nasty looking bumps and horrible falls from the top. I appreciate the work and effort that they put into this match, but it was just brutal. And overall, I'm 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 with you. Uh, I you know we we, we watched that match back. And overall, like, I don't know if, if it's, it's hard to tell what's real and what's not real with Ziggler because he sells so well and he oversells at times, but it's hard to tell. And I, I'm seriously fearful for what Ziggler is doing because, you know, I don't want to see him getting a concussion again and getting knocked out. But man, like he was taking power bombs onto, onto, onto ladders and he was, he was taking all of those dives to the outside, and man, I just assume he's dead at any given moment. So, <laughs> yeah, he could be. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's just going through the motions and doesn't realize he's dead, which is why he can take the bumps that he can. <laughs> I can see that. He's a walker. All right, so let's talk about the uh, the Miz and Miz down match against the Usos. Uh, we saw. Uh, more of a heel turn, not not a turn, but uh, like the heel side of Miz. He took the slammies and attacked both Usos. Um, overall, the crowd was was definitely involved in this, and this is the same same thing that we've that we've echoed pretty much a- any other time that we've reviewed a Miz and Miz down Miz down match. Is that we're we're totally into Damian Sando. the The live crowd was totally into Damian Sando. It, does, it, it didn't matter. Who they were facing, uh, they're into Damien Sandow, and that's it. Like the rest of the match could have been crap, as long as we can f- focus uh, our view on what on what Damien Sandow is doing. That's all that matters. Do you think that's a, that's an that's a, an acceptable thing that we don't care what the ma- like what's happening in the match that we're we're only focusing on what Damien Sandow is doing outside of the ring? Well, I mean, we that, that we had several moments like, or, you know, characters like that in the past. Uh, it's not anything new. It's just, it, look at Fandango. When Fandango was popular, all people wanted to do throughout the match is whatever he was doing. If he started to kind of dance, they'd do the song. So it's not that far out of the realm. You know, people love the Sandow gimmick right now, the Mizdow thing. And I could see them still being behind it, but at a certain point, they're just, it, it's going to turn on a dime. It's not going to be a gradual thing. All of a sudden, it'll just be like, it'll be like, yeah, Ms. Dow next day. Fuck Ms. Dow. It's, it's going to happen. And it's just, it's just one of those things that happens. Like, I, there was a period of time where everybody loved Santino. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, fuck Santino. I think it was when the Cobra debuted. Um, that's what I think one of the points where he was very abrasive. It's either that or Santino. One of the two. Uh, but yeah, I, I, it's fine to be behind that. I don't think it's a big deal, but they need to figure out a way to harness that and maybe develop his character a little bit while they've got the attention to help him rise. Yeah, yeah I think Joe hit it on the head. You know, you, you have to figure out a way to make this work because you can't take too much attention out of what's going out in the ring or from Miz because I, I'm just glad they finally fucking did something with Sandow that actually matters after shitting on him for how long, and, you know, hey, I could have said this, like, you know, oh, I don't know, three months ago, but, yeah, oh, work sucks. Anyway, um, but, you know, it, it, but, but Joe, I think, is dead on. I, I think you're going to have to do something with this where you're still making Sandow relevant but not taking away from what else is happening. And that's going to be a challenge because... People are behind him, but they're not behind the Miz. You got to figure something else out, to make it happen. So, yeah, it, it's definitely a shame that Sandow does seem to be distracting so much from what's going on inside the ring because the Usos are a great team, and the Miz is putting on the best work he's put on in years, basically ever since he got dropped from the main event scene. And I think that's really because Miz has had a chance to really sink his teeth into heel Miz again. Is whenever he keeps flip flopping back and forth from face to heel, that it seems like he doesn't know what to do and how to get over again. 
Sandow, I, I love what Sandow's doing. He's easily one of the most entertaining aspects of Raw right now. It's, it's just, I wish people would, in this age where people are talking about valuing the effort, the the skill shown by the wrestlers themselves, I wish people would focus a little bit of that on The Miz as well, because he's putting on some really good work right now, and not just focus it exclusively on Sandow. Yeah, and, or Miz, excuse me. Yeah, and that and, and that should be talked about. I mean, like <laughs> these matches, especially the 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 pay per view match, as well as the the following Raw, Miz is in the is in the match the entire time. <laughs> like, like uh, Ms. Dow rarely ever comes in. I think that was like a seven minute match at TLC. Ms. Dow wasn't involved pretty much at the entire, like the entire time. So to have Ms. basically carry a tag team match, it does show, you know, how, um, how good Ms. is, you know, uh, and, and it also, and this is being talked about in the live chat. Um, it, it does, and I think this is Blue Kector, yeah, he says, you know, it's, it's serving two purposes at the moment. It's reestablishing Miz as a, as a heel that people can actually hate, which is something we haven't seen in a long time. Like most, most of the time heels are more over than faces and people get behind the heels. But this is, this is a guy like we, I can't stand. I don't like Miz at all. It, Irregardless of what happens, <laughs> you know, in this, in this partnership with Sandow, but it also allows, you know, Sandow, uh, more, more opportunity to get over when, when he does break from his, you know, most people are looking for that hot tag and it never happens. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, uh, this is, this is like an, while I, I don't want to see Sandow in this spot where it's like we're just, we're waiting for that hot tag. We're waiting for that moment for him to do something really big. Um, it, it is it is a nice story that they're that they're building to. It's a nice climax that they're building to. Yeah, I I just want to throw out one more thing. Heel Miz right now, he's doing exactly the same thing that got Ziggler over in the first place. Ziggler got his push, his his response from the crowd. What he gets now, he got when he was a heel, when he was doing exactly what Miz was doing. And the fact that apparently nobody seems to recognize that is is blowing my mind. It's Miz is a good worker. It yeah, he re, he needs somebody equally good or better to work with to really let that shine through. But you can say the same thing about Cena and look where he's at. So yeah, it, it's it's just a damn shame that nobody seems to be giving Miz the credit that he actually deserves. Yeah, I you know I'm drinking right, but. Looking back to my my viewpoint on Raw, I thought his segment on Raw this week with um what's her face Naomi Naomi, uh he did really well. I thought that was like one of his best segments ever. Just like him on the mic, just talking. I thought I thought it was really cool. Miz Miz definitely is doing a lot of good work, both in ring and out of the ring. But our focus, even even from the live crowd at TLC. Our focus is on Sandow. Yeah, we we aren't giving Miz the the credit that that he does deserve. But hopefully, Garvin, Garvin his best segment ever. Really, his best really? segment ever. Well, really? outside of that, like WrestleMania Good thing Garvin, where Garvin, he like really introduced the pay per view. Never mind. That was I'm pretty sorry. cool. <laughs> I think I I think I picked up what you're putting down there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's all I, you for. I'm not picking up anything that's really being put down. Really? Really? <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, that that stuff was pretty good too, I guess. Brandy. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's picking up what I'm putting down. All right. Well, played, Dick, I <laughs> no, I got you. All right, there we go. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> this uh, this uh this drink of uh, <laughs> rum from uh, I don't know somewhere in Nicaragua is for <laughs> next. Thank you. <laughs> A pile of cigar, like I got this. Somebody brought me back a bottle of rum from Nicaragua, and it was the fucking maddest ass rum you will ever have. And I'm polishing it off tonight. So we won't have it then, is what you're saying? Uh, no. Indian Not giver after tonight, unfortunately. Indian giver. Okay. <laughs> um, rest of the pay per view. Wow. That's I mean, a racist statement, my friend. Have another beer. Uh, <laughs> Um, rest of the pay-per-view, um, 
you know, I I put little smiley faces to rem- remember how the live crowd was uh, reacting. And overall, outside of the the opener, so the uh the, the IC title match outside of Miz and Mizdow versus the Usos, uh the crowd really wasn't into the rest of the event. I mean, Cena and Rollins that got a lot of good crowd reaction. I mean, well, let me let me take that back. It wasn't necessarily good crowd reaction, but the crowd was into it. It was the Cena, you know, Cena sucks. Um, you know, let's go Cena chance. But overall, the crowd was like totally into it as far as that goes. There were a lot of Rollins chants, which, which was very surprising. Um, I was just hoping there would be more. I'd be hoping, you know, that there's let's go Rollins, let's go Cena chance, but that never picked up. Um, the question is, did you get the necessary chance that were requested started? Like, let's go AJ. Yeah. So let me, uh, let me talk about my experience. Um, and I feel like this is the same experience that I've had at pretty much every WWE event. Um, my section is quiet. Like no one in my section chants. No one in my section like reacts in any way. They just sit there with their arms crossed. Their, their, or their, their, their hands under their, uh, under their seats. They're, they're not reacting whatsoever. I'll be sitting there like chanting, Cena sucks. Uh, I got smashed in the face with an elbow by my brother because my brother is a casual fan and he thinks Cena's still cool, even though he's in his forties. Um, but both your brother and Cena. Yes. But mostly my brother. (laughs) Um, who is wearing a gold dust mask? Uh, let, let's 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 do a quick aside. Let's do a quick aside. My I, I, my nephew, my nephew is about eight years old, and he just started watching wrestling again. So they just got the network for Survivor Series because uh, my brother wanted it was a you know it was the free month. So my brother wanted to see if he could get it working on his Xbox Live, and um, it did. So he he was able to watch Survivor Series, and and my nephew started watching wrestling again and was really getting like he watches main event he watches like anything that's on there um his favorite his favorite wrestler right now is fucking gold dust <laughs> like <laughs> gold yes dust. <laughs> like how 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 amazing is that is that you know he's 8 years old oh, and his oh, favorite oh. wrestler is the one of the oldest wrestlers on the, on the roster <laughs> oh circle uh. What are we talking about? Um, yeah, we were talking about um, rum. <laughs> um, I I do want to say Ryback does get over in front of live crowds. I know that's a big bone of contention, um, especially from guys like Deuce Loosely. But Ryback does get over in front of live crowds. It's just that he's booked against like the worst opponents ever. Ryback versus Kane in the chairs match. Like, who's gonna give a shit about that match? That was that. That's his problem. He's not booked against guys that people care about or people like that that we would believe that he would actually go go over. You know, like I, Cena. I did give a shit about Kane when he whipped that chair at Ryback's face. That was, <laughs> that was an awesome shot. <laughs> I th- I think the problem with Ryback is that when we kept getting teased and teased and teased with him being in the main event against Punk. Sure. Against Punk. Mm. I, I, I think that really did hurt him for a lot of oh, totally. long-time fans. And I think that's the that's the catch. But but there's definitely a difference between what you hear on TV and what you hear uh, when, when you're there live. And I know uh, they're live. I mean, we weren't necessarily behind Ryback the entire match. I think it was pretty, it was pretty quiet. I think it was very similar to what you heard on TV, but there was a lot of Ryback chants, a lot of feed me more. They, uh, the crowd was totally into that part of it. Um, it's just that that didn't translate well in, on TV for some reason, but Ryback's definitely over. It's just that they have to put him against people that, you know, we, we, we want to see him defeat or that we care about. So the, what they're doing on Raw this week, Ryback versus Rusev, I'm totally stoked for. I think this is epic. This 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 could be what we've wanted for Ryback and Rusev, really. Yeah, I agree there. Uh, I'm He's waiting still for the machine for, for him to go up again, so this could be a good one. Yeah, I'm waiting for the Shockmaster to come back and be the one to take down Rusev. <laughs> 
No uh, one else can do it. Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt TLC match. Overall thoughts about uh, about how this ended. I think that yeah, ending gets a typical lot ending for any WWE main event lately. Screwy finish, yeah. I, I don't think it deserves all the shit that it's been getting. Like, obviously, a monitor won't do that in <laughs> real life outside of kayfabe. <laughs> but did you see it coming? No. I didn't understand why it was still connected to something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I figured it with, was, given that it was yeah. signal, but I mean, with with four, four, like four, six cables, like bundled together, feeding into the back, like, like I'm sorry, was that coming right out of the power truck? <laughs> yeah. First of all, a monitor does not have four cables running into it. Second of all, there's no cable for a monitor that's that long. <laughs> I constantly struggle with my with my monitor cables. Too short. That's what she said. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I I just think it's unfair to overshadow what was really an excellent match with yeah, yeah. All, all the shit that ending has gotten. But he had, but I mean, look at what he had in previous pay per views. I mean, he's been beaten by a hologram. True. Uh, it just it, it's been it's been there's been nothing clean. I only just I understand I only gave one reference, but you know whiskey. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Um, that but takes like you for everything on the spot, yeah. <laughs> Even when I'm sober. Um, but yeah, it's just had maybe that happened earlier in the match, and there was a little more back and forth, and it was a contributing factor to the end. Maybe we could have taken it as a little bit more believable. But really, I mean. When he probably needed a second person to help pull the cable out to get it long enough to just that was stupid. I mean that that cable looked like it was also helping feed the Alaskan pipeline. Like <laughs> <laughs> just no, too much. Yeah. I, I understand that was really tr- they're just trying to hide the lines to to pop the TV at, on cue, but sure. But really. We have never seen an explosion like that come out of any other monitor, especially the ones that are, you know, the monitors in the Spanish announce table that get slammed to the floor over and over <laughs> again repeatedly. Yeah. But they have a big old fucking dent in the side. Uh, Those are in special metal boxes yeah, that, protect, sure. that protect against explosions. <laughs> so. I mean, I mean, when Jericho hit hit HBK with the Jeritron 2000, we didn't see an explosion like that. Sure, we saw a little bit of smoke, but it wasn't like the pyro explosion of Dean Ambrose. Well, low tech, obviously. I mean, is Dean Ambrose that unstable that the molecular structure of the TV changed and caused an explosion? Apparently. That's a science joke, obviously. Uh, I, 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 can, I can live with it since Bray Wyatt needed the win in order to keep this thing going, so... Oh, just because he's your avatar doesn't mean that. He... <laughs> it's weird because, like, by hook or by crook, I will carry this shit. Yeah, I mean, we, we're so torn. Uh, not just us, but like the fans in general, we're so torn because we want to see Dean Ambrose do well. We want to see Bray Wyatt do well. Um, I think that the goal of this type of ending was to make look like make both look strong, heading out so neither looks weak. Um, I don't know if it necessarily did that, per se, but overall, though, um, one of the rumors that are that are going around right now is that we're going to get Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 31. So um, because of that, like, I'm okay with, like, these supernatural happenings with Bray Wyatt. You know, we, we've got the hologram of last pay-per-view. Uh, we got this weird monitor glitch that never happens in real life happening. Um, I'm curious what they do next, but because, because of that rumor and because, you know, there, it, it seems like they're trying to build back up Ray Wyatt's, um, I don't creep know. factor. Yeah. Creep factor, I think is a good, is a good term. Just to, just the, the overall, uh, supernatural feel of what he's doing without actually saying those terms. I, I think, I think because of that, I think I'm okay with this. Yeah, I could totally see that. Okay. Uh, overall, pay-per-view. Did you like it? Yeah, it was pretty good. 
It was, uh, it, it wasn't a terrible pay per view. Everybody got Everybody's, everybody was trashing this pay per view. I don't think it was as bad as it, it, it's been made out to be. Because, I mean, we did have Harper and Ziggler being great. Miz and Mizdow was entertaining. Uh, I mean, granted, we want to see Eric Rowan go over Big Show, but they did the best they could with that match. Cena versus Rollins was a decent table match. Uh, Ryback versus Kane in a chair. Oh, well, yeah. But, uh, I mean, Rusev, <laughs> Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt. I mean, that was a good match up until the monitor thing. Yeah. It wasn't. It was an okay pay-per-view. It was acceptable. I would give it a, a B minus C plus. I don't think it was the worst pay per view of the year. Yeah, I think a lot mm-hmm. of people are trying to compare it to what NXT did the Takeover, which is that. a completely different thing that we we can't honestly compare because of different reasons. But overall, um, I thought it was okay. Live, it was it was pleasant. To me, it was much better than Money in the Bank as far as a live event. Yep. Okay, let's uh let's jump into Raw uh before we move on. Oh, actually, let, let's let's take a step back. Pay per view picks. Uh, this week, S- Nick, you got six picks correct, and that's both for NXT Takeover, Our Evolution, as well as uh TLC. You got six picks correct. Joe, you got seven, seven picks Whoa. correct. Nick, what are you doing over there? That's not me. That's, That's Kevin. Kevin. Oh fuck! What did I? <laughs> <laughs> um, I somehow magically uh got ten correct picks uh for for this week, which is awesome. So that Shows takes our overall. <laughs> yeah, that 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 takes our overall to uh Joe. You've got forty seven. Um, I have sixty two, and Nick, you have sixty three. So I'm I'm almost there, almost there to your, uh, you know, booking expertise. Even with your shenanigans pulled at your live events, you still can't overtake me. <laughs> <sighs> all right, so Raw. Let's talk about Raw. I know we all watched Raw. Uh, the one of the bigger news items was the that the Ascension. Uh, their, their debut is coming. So I, f- I think their first debut video, uh, came out on SmackDown last week. We got it. We got something different. I think this week on, I, I don't watch SmackDown, so I don't, I have no idea, but, um, Ascension debut is coming soon. Anyone else confused why they resemble, uh, LOD, the Road Warriors so much? Oh, no, Lou, we didn't forget the drink. We're not there yet. Go ahead. Continue. I'll drink just for that. All huh? right, let's drink. <laughs> let's drink. Drink good. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I just refilled. Oh, God. Hold on. It's a little more than I was expecting. What? The Flergen So let's let's try this again. So the Ascension, uh, they're coming to the main roster. Anyone else confused why they resemble the Road Warriors? So much now. This guy, you don't touch the Road Warriors of the Legion of Doom unless you are like the fucking legit ass tag team Road Warriors Legion of Doom esque. Uh, you, you got one tag team the last ten years that could have done that and gotten away, in my opinion, and their names were the Motor City Machine Gun. What? No good. What? Not <laughs> hate. You do not, you do not mess with the icons of, of possibly, arguably the icons of tag team wrestling of all time. I'm not saying that they are. I'm saying you put them in the fucking equation. So, like, so. if if there was a team to take over for the Road Warriors, it would be Motor City Machine Guns for you. In my opinion, yes. Okay. I, uh. I mean, it's been stated many times in the past. Of my uh, incredible <laughs> reverence for the Motor City Machine Guns and everything that they have done, I and not would, only for the fact that they kicked ass and are from the D, but the fact that they might have the greatest name in tag team wrestling never hurts. But don't fucking touch the Road Warriors unless you're the goddamn Road Warriors of the Legion, damn. 
Mm-hmm. Right, somebody else can talk. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know about mimicking their look this much. I hope that's not a permanent thing. I get why they needed to change the look because previously they've been going with the whole Illuminati gimmick and they hadn't really been doing that for a while, yet they still dressed up the same. So I get why you need to change some things and I can even see the attraction of having like a Mad Max... Borderlands style tag team around Welcome to the Wasteland. I I think that's okay. It's just when you start doing the paint and the shoulder pads that I don't know if they can carry that because the Ascension is hardly. Uh, to be fair, I don't remember the Legion of Doom ever being that strong character wise. It's just they were unstoppable killing machines, is what the gimmick was, and I don't necessarily see the Ascension being able to carry that. Especially Victor, who isn't quite as big, and he's he, he doesn't have that wrestling style. Not nearly to the degree that Connor does anyway, so... Yeah, I don't I don't see the Legion of Doom thing. If you're going to do anything, I mean, make them... If you're going to have them be like the next Legion of Doom, fuck that. Make them the next Demolition. That was a good rip-off of the Road Warrior gimmick. Uh, and then you, then you get the... Uh, then you get the gimp style look. Uh, That's just it. You beat me to it. Is is the the, the demolition look like the gimps from fucking Pulp Fiction? I mean, at least like Legion of Doom. Well, that's of, where they got their look from. Badass. But don't forget that Hell, a team Hell No, according to Harrison, was the best tag team since the 1980s. <laughs> and uh, and how many times have we listened to Harrison? I don't know. I wonder if he's still alive. Um. He is, he is, and I can tell you why. Because he was really pissed that the Browns were getting their asses handed to them by the Bengals. Hence, texting me. So, I definitely know that he's a lot. Wow. Trapped um, in the pits of dad life. Ugh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a hell. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I don't even remember why we were talking about Ascension. So uh, they're debuting the outfits, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they had shoulder pads, lots of leather, the red and black face paint. Here come the axe, and here come the smasher. <laughs> with the ascension, walking disaster. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, you know, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with imitation. I have a problem when it's blatant and you have no fucking reason to do that when you're literally trying to be who they were, which, okay. I mean, it's it's pretty bad. I You know, you got to make your mark before you can kind of go that bold. Okay, but Animal's still with the company as a as an agent of some type, right? I, I believe so. so. Maybe. Joe Larnitis, yeah. He, he shouldn't have to with James making all his money in <laughs> the Rams or whatever. Okay, so and so if he's there, if he's still making making the bank, he's the one who's going to be able to give the okay for that gimmick to be reused. Well, mm-hmm. fair point. And, yeah, and I don't think that they were necessarily copying, but it did resemble it more than what it should have. I mean, the Ascension never has come off like that to me. Uh, Nick, you you have more experience with the Ascension, but to me. Like, these were, like, a totally different team, but this segment on Raw, I don't know how it was on SmackDown, but this segment on Raw totally, totally came off like a Legion of Doom promo, comparatively. Yeah, like I mentioned before, this has never been the Ascension beforehand. Again, they 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 use a lot of the whole Illuminati New World Order symbols, the Eye of Horus, the Pyramid, the, the, the All-Seeing Eye. That's what they use in their imagery. So, oh, I, what a rush! Yeah, total <laughs> annihilation. <laughs> I need to find that damn picture I have with Hawk and Ahmed Johnson. <laughs> wow, that's uh, worth some money. Uh, Blue Cat Tour. No, no, I'm, yeah. I'm, right, I'm right between the two of them. It's a terrible photo. You can barely see Ahmed Johnson. It was such <laughs> really? a poorly exposed, poorly exposed uh, Polaroid. So this was before Ahmed Johnson gained all the weight. 
This is, this is before Hawk died. That's the best okay. I can tell you. <laughs> uh, so a blue cactor in the, in, in the live chat saying they have, they have had one promo video and people are already complaining. We have no idea what they're actually going to do with them yet. And yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with you. I, I'm not complaining. I'm just, this is just different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you're right. You have a very house. valid point. I don't want to sit here. I don't want to sit here and, and, and hate on them. I want to hate. I don't like the. I don't like the, 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 uh, the, the illusion of where they're going with it. And you make a very valid point, but it seems pretty blatant to me for a guy who loved LOD for a long, long time. And again, to me, considers them to be one of the best tag teams of all time. I, I, I don't know. It just. It, it, it like it, it was like if you like jabbed a needle like into your like elbow or something and kind of like moved it around. Like it just felt wrong. <laughs> I don't know. That's like the worst <laughs> thing I could have said there. So somebody talk about some of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I I can't share that specific um, scenario. <laughs> but um, no. But I, the I, thing I, I want to bring up is that I'm not like I, an I, masochist or anything. So like. <laughs> But yeah, I'm not concerned about them ripping up the ripping off the World Warriors look so much as I'm concerned that that comparison is is bad for the Ascension because they won't be able to make it stick. They they can't live up to it. Yeah. I I I don't know if they can. Yeah, and, and it's unnecessary. I mean, we as you know, again, I have a a very brief understanding of the Ascension based on NXT on the WWE Network. That's the only time I've ever seen them. So I don't know what led up to that. But I don't remember red and black face paint. I don't remember like these weird mm-hmm. leather outfits that they had, like these shoulder pads. <laughs> like This well, is unnecessary. Why Why do we need that? Why do we need that addition to get them onto the main roster? Just put them on the main roster. Okay, they, they never had face paint, but Connor went through a lot of uh, alternate style outfits explain there, there was one point this was back when bram was still in nxt uh where they came out with essentially case like what barrett has now except spikier and then connor would come out with like sort of a not a loincloth but something along those lines except longer shaggier spikier like connor's worn some weird shit so not like the road warriors not so far as the shoulder pads. Okay. Did he kind of look like a caveman? <laughs> uh, n- no. Very, very Mad Max meets New World Order. Mm. I, I, just as a quick aside, I want to clear something up that's been brought up in the live chat. Um, Connor is bigger than Animal or Hawk ever were. Connor is six five. Those two were six two. And Victor's only an inch shorter. So just want to clear that up. Well, are you using facts or wrestling facts? Uh, yes. It, okay. That doesn't fucking matter. That has nothing to do with the gimmick or the shoulder pads or what we're talking about. Yeah. Congratulations, he's 6'5". Fuck that. <laughs> we're talking about the gimmick and what the character is being portrayed as. It doesn't matter how much fucking taller he is. I, I, I just know that this this segment, I've I've seen more energy from the Ascension from this segment that I have since NXT debuted on the network. That is true. I I highly prefer pre-network Ascension over the current model. And a lot of that had to do with Kenneth Cameron. I thought he was really good in that role. I I hate that he left the company the way he did. Okay. Uh, Okay. I think we went longer than we should have with the Ascension. So let's go with the best thing that happened on Raw this week. Joe? Uh, I'm going to go with the tease that Heyman was going to be in a match and the resulting Brock Lesnar, uh, appearance. That was good. And, and with DDP yoga, you too can take an F5 from Brock Lesnar. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Kevin, your, your favorite thing from Raw this week. You said to skip him. Oh, okay. Uh, Nick, your favorite thing from Raw this week. Um, let's see, let's see. This is a really bad question to ask on the drunk show. All right, I'll go with I'll go with my favorite things from Raw this week. I was very glad that the WWE Championship title race uh was back and it just made made to feel important. So the the 
reintroduction to Brock Lesnar with the whole Chris Jericho bit. Um, and then on top of that, what he did at the end of Raw uh, attacking John Cena. I also like the, uh, you know, just in general, um, the the story between Rollins and Paul Heyman. I think that could lead to some cool stuff. I don't know what. You know, it's weird that they would partner up with Seth Rollins knowing that Seth Rollins can cash in at any time. But um and who knows? Who knows what will a- end up really happening here, but I thought I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, again, uh I'm a Ryback fan, I am a Rusev fan. I know that is uh a minority uh made by like one or two people, but um I I really like the idea of Ryback versus Rusev. I don't know what it'll lead to, but uh, I'm 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 th- I'm very happy with the idea of that's going to be the feud moving forward. I, I, you know, if we got that, one thing I think would be would be interesting. I mean, with Ryback, do you actually see him losing to Rusev? And if so, does he tap? Like I, I don't think we've ever seen. Uh, have we ever seen Ryback tap? Huh. No. Hmm. I mean, if if we did, it was during his run with with uh, Hawkins. No, Axel. Sorry, Runker. I I would have sworn Punk tapped him out with the Anaconda vice once. Maybe. That okay? That may be. I don't know, man. I that could be drunk speculation. I am so torn because, like, I want to see Ryback do some quality things as a singles competitor, but against Rusev, I don't know if I'm I'm ready to see that. Like. You know, there, there was this whole, um, controversy that happened over Twitter and Instagram over the, over the weekend. Uh, Lana tweeted a photo of the Europe, of the new European championship. And it, there's a lot of speculation that it was just like a replica belt that had the new WWE logo. But still, you know, the idea of bringing in the European championship is something we have talked about before. So dropping the U.S. championship, doing the, the, uh, European championship instead. I think that'd be that'd be a cool story, but I don't know. It's like I I, it's like the 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 Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt storyline. Like I don't know who I want to see win more, because they're both guys I want to see succeed. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. So I'm 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 ready to sit back and wait to see what WWE does, but I'm hoping they don't have Ryback lose. Like they've had Jack Swagger lose because that's terrible. <laughs> that's yeah, been, that's been like a worthless filler pay per view match, and I don't want to see Ryback fit that that role. But I don't know. Yeah, Nick, I I hate that Groundhog Day garbage that they got Swagger stuck in. It's, yeah, I I really wish they would have just gone ahead and had Swagger go over. I don't uh, know. I'm not. I'm not with you there. I'm okay with Swagger losing. One thing I actually did appreciate. Yeah, my feelings there. <laughs> Nick, go ahead. Your 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 favorite moment of Raw? Yeah, my my favorite moment of Raw had to be the the closing moments when Rollins was leaving the cage and J and J Security was just cheering him on like he was about to win the Super Bowl. And when Rollins comes down, they both jump up in the air and start cheering. <laughs> that was just a fucking awesome moment. I I love those two so much more now. And the way they carried Rollins out on their shoulders is just priceless. That that closing moment where they're at the top of the ramp, genius. Yeah, it's very good, but not a cliffhanger. Right. <laughs> it, it is good to see uh, Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury still doing stuff, though. Ja- I think Jamie Noble's career was cut short way too quick. Yeah, those two have been taking so many bumps lately. I know one of them got sidelined because of a neck injury. And that was Jamie Noble, for sure. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if Mercury did. Uh, we might have to drunkenly Google, but I definitely know that Jamie Noble did. Because I mean, it was. I think our "I love Nidia" segments <laughs> were cut way too short. That was yeah. It was a fantastic gimmick. <laughs> that he was just some like hillbilly <laughs> dude. <laughs> it was so terrible and yet so good at yeah. the same time. Yeah. He 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 was he was a great worker and he pulled it off. So remind me that was post Attitude Era, right? Yes. Yeah, but very I reminiscent just, of Attitude Era. Yeah, 
It's like it's like he took he took the skill set of somebody good and then the wardrobe of uh, just incredible. Right on. Yeah. Um. Okay. Shots. Time for shots. Shot. Deal. And that's uh. Yeah. Well. Drink your stoli, bitch. I don't know how this is gonna come off in the final MP3. Well, I'm the Bacardi now. This is gonna be brutal. Thirty fifth stoli. Calvin's gonna have the best shits tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's gonna be a long day. So, so real quick, um. We were all talking about taking tomorrow off or something, weren't we? Uh, Did you I ever can't. do that, Joe? No. In fact, I've got a hardcore. I got a big project of work that I got to work on tomorrow, so That's, this that sucks. Be interesting. That sucks. Bro. There was a day I could take off uh, tomorrow, but then it's not gonna happen. I got too much to do. Yeah, I'm I'm working from home tomorrow, so I'll start whenever I start. <clears throat> yeah, and fuck you. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> I feel bad for saying this now, but my class is wrapped up this semester, and I got nothing to do tomorrow. So. Oh, man. Uh, okay. So uh, we did have some questions for Ask FTW, but I really feel like we, we've we already answered them, just because I forgot that we had uh, added them to Ask FTW. Uh, Ask FTW. I'll get it out. Um, but Rich Coffee did ask a question that we didn't talk about, and that is... You know, when will Seth Rollins cash in and will it be against Brock? So we saw everything that happened this week on Raw, this weird partnership between uh, Heyman and Brock and Seth Rollins. Do you think that means that Rollins won't cash in on Brock or what do you what do you foresee happening? And feel free to do some fantasy booking if you'd like to. Um, I'm thinking that this is. If he's going to cash in, it'll be when Brock loses the title, uh, and he'll walk out. Like maybe if he loses it to Cena, then Rollins will cash in. Uh, like you know, Cena's so fucking t- you know worn out after beating Brock, and he's just so broken and battered. And I think that's when it'll happen. Uh, and then if we do, if that happens at the Rumble, and let's say Reigns wins the Rumble, maybe we can find some way to work Ambrose in there, and then you got to then you've got the Shield triple threat at. WrestleMania? Yeah. That's been rumored a lot, actually. You know, the the idea of Rollins getting pushed up to that level. Ambrose, after his deal with uh, with Bray Wyatt, that triple threat. I think that would be fantastic. A lot of people are hoping for that. I don't know, though, if that's the direction they're going, though. It might not be, but it, that would... people want, so they want. Yeah. That, that would be... Well, we wanted Daniel Bryan to win at WrestleMania, and he did. Um, that's true. I mean, this is uh, this would be two years in a row that the main event is essentially up and comers for the WWE. I mean, I know Daniel Bryan was around for a while before, and he had you know some runs, but the crowd wanted it; they were feverishly hungry for it. Sure, and but we got Daniel Bryan. So, I mean, it could be po- a possibility that it's, it's kind of a passing of the torch that we'd get this. Um, I mean, because come on, let's be, let's be perfectly honest here: we don't know how much longer Cena's got. Right. We know he's a machine, and he puts his heart and soul, you know, puts his heart and soul and body in the line, and you know, no one's ever gonna, you know, come on. Uh, it, 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 he does great, but it's getting to be that time where we need to make sure we have bona fide stars to follow those footsteps. Right. And that would be a great way to show that we've got three top guys here. Sure, and and just to clarify, because I I might have stopped listening, but um. Fuck you too. Brock Lesnar has a Mania match, right? Or are you you think it, he's gone before Mania? Uh, he could be gone. He can't be gone as soon as after Mania, uh, Rumble. There, there are the, those rumors that's being talked about in live chat as well. There are those rumors that uh, Brock Lesnar could be dropping the title against Cena, which uh, sort of would make sense, you know, based on the story that they've been telling. I'll be surprised if he sticks around. Okay. For Mania, I guess I should say. Sure. I, the only other option we have at that point is we see Reigns. If if Lesnar keeps the title after Rumble, we see Reigns win the championship or at Mania by winning the Royal Rumble. He's already promised us something bigger than the slaughtering he gave last time. Yeah. But, you know, the Miz said he was going to win the Royal Rumble once, too. So 
Who Miz Miz used to be cool. Yeah, and then you know Johnny Mundo left, and well, then Miz started doing Miz TV, and it was like, ah, fuck this guy. And uh, the Rock came in. <laughs> Uh, anyone else? Anyone else thoughts on on Seth cashing in? Like when that's going to take place? If you'll cash in on Brock or who? My my guess is Rumble. I don't think he'll cash in on Brock, but I, I think they've set it up that way to where if Brock. I, I agree. If Brock drops it, I think he's going to cash in. My, my guess would be Rumble because you don't, unless you want to push it past Mania, which is a maybe. Um. I, I don't see how you can't do it at Rumble, you know, to really set something up for Mania. Yeah. So I, I think it's probably going to, if you want my opinion, I, I, that makes the most sense to do it at Rumble. But then again, that's exactly why they won't fucking do it. <laughs> well, I know, uh, I mean, there is the rule that if you get the money in the bank, that you have to cash it in before WrestleMania. No, it's before the next Money in the Bank. Or is it by WrestleMania? Is it before the well, next Money in the Bank? No, yeah, no, they, it's, they got one, one year, so it's not the next Money in the Bank. But I don't think they'll let it drag out that long. I mean, they don't like to do that. No, no. I mean, Ziggler cashed in the night after Mania, so. Okay. Whatever. Yes, yeah, so you have a full year to cash it in. Okay. Let's rewind. Forget I said that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're the one who wrote fucking like drunk show. memory. <laughs> um, I can't wait for you to be tomorrow and be like, "What the fuck did I just say?" <laughs> this, this is this is going live as is. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, yeah. For me, um, I mean, I don't know. I, I I really don't. I think it would be cool if Rollins cashed in at Royal Rumble after Cena defeats Brock. And have Rollins take the title off of Cena. I think that would be awesome from you know from our point of view, from my point of view specifically. I think that would be cool because yeah, like Cena would defeat Brock Lesnar, and there's there's Seth Rollins to pick up the scraps uh, from Cena. I think that would be pretty cool. I, I do like what you're saying as far as you know, Joe. As far as the idea of Seth versus uh Rollins I'm sorry <laughs> Rollins versus Ambrose Stop versus <laughs> uh versus Reigns I think that's awesome and a lot of people are talking about that possibility of having the shield main event um WrestleMania I think that's cool I think it's a cool idea I just don't know how logistically you would really put that together knowing that um, Ambrose has lost as many matches as he has uh, over the last few weeks or the last few months. Um, other fantasy booking idea? Yeah. Cena beats Lesnar. Yeah. And then the Druids come out and carry Lesnar's body to a grave where the Undertaker buries him. Yeah. And then, okay, get this. Continue. But then, like, that hologram smoke shit that came up in front of Dean Ambrose with right. Bray Wyatt attack, that happens. And all of a sudden, like, Bray Wyatt attacks the Undertaker, and then Sting, he, like, jizzes all over everybody. and then From the rafters, right? From the rafters, okay. yeah. <laughs> so it's really just anybody up there. Like, they've got, like, the NXT roster just beating one down, throwing it over the side. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. no. And then the ghost of Tupac shows up. and <laughs> I, have, I have a way. Somebody wants there. fish sticks. Uh, I have, I have a way better scenario than that. Okay, so Go Cena ahead. beats Lesnar. Yeah. Which, all of a sudden, after the match, Mickey James, Lita, <laughs> and uh, Stacey Keeble come out okay. and start making out in the oh. middle of the ring. Perfect. Yes. And, and I think, you know, and then, like, we forget that that train wreck happened and just watch the hottest thing we've ever seen. Russo's booking this, correct? <laughs> If anyone is on a poll, we will know for sure. <laughs> well, Stacey, I've got a poll Stacey Keebler can be on. See, I threw in one for each of us. You, hey, you're you Stacey Keebler, Garvin. I think I thought you told me you like Lita, and, and we all know Mickey James. I mean, I would. Wow. I mean, I like Lita, too. I mean, it's just as long as she's got a little bit of weight on her, not, the ba- not that Magneto face shit, which she was... <laughs> So as long as she's not telling a 45-minute story that we've already heard on another podcast. And then Are Mr. you T- really listening <laughs> to her? And then Mr. T comes out and he's just like, let me tell you about my mama. 
Mama. Um, now I need to watch a video of Mama the Day. Clips <laughs> all the mamas from that Hall of Fame speech and put them in a row. Uh, LouTube wins. Uh, suggests that Seth cashes in on Kevin Owens at the next Takeover event because he wants the top title. I'm okay see, with this. I could see that as well. Mr. T said mother 73 times in his induction speech. <laughs> I actually think that Cena might not beat Lesnar at Rumble. How or awesome. Least... How awesome would that be though? <laughs> Another if, if Cena did go over or if he didn't. If he if Cena lost. Yeah, that that would be amazing. And completely fitting because I don't see how Cena legitimately deserves another shot at Brock after getting destroyed the last few times. But I I would think I don't know if it's more likely or if I just want to see this more, but I think Reigns wins the Rumble, Lesnar beats Cena, Lesnar and Reigns fight at Mania, maybe Reigns goes over and then Rollins cashes in. Yeah, Lesnar would never do that. Never. You're right. It would be cool, but it would never happen. Yeah, I definitely like the idea, though, of Cena losing, Brock Lesnar looking strong, like strong as, as all hell, and Rollins cashing in on Brock when he's not looking kind of thing. That way Brock can go off to where he's going next. There's a lot of rumors that he's going to the UFC next. You know, Brock going to the UFC, still looking strong, um, and we can move forward as as wrestling fans. Or Brock Lesnar wins takes the WWE title to the UFC where he faces CM Punk and <laughs> drops it to CM Punk. Dude. Battle of the Heyman guys. Let's book it. Dude. Lesnar will never do it. Vince would never sign off on it. He doesn't want to damn it. Lesnar. Fuck you. If Lesnar, goes back to, if Lesnar goes back to fucking UFC, he already wasn't doing well. Now you've aged him five years. No good. Well, he's healthy now, though. So he's unstoppable. Oh, <laughs> wave that flag. No diverticulitis after five years. All right. He seems pretty healthy. Hey, if he can still keep putting it in Sable, I guess he's all right. <laughs> I don't know if he can fight without a beard, though. No, he needs a beard. That's what Sable is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That was a thing. <laughs> uh, shots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll do it for the Bacardi. Okay. Oh. Uh, my wife is going to be mad at me because I drank most of the beam. But we'll see. Uh, like we, you guys are strangers at the liquor store. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, no, no, make her. Hey, make, make her. Another conversation here. She she can bitch when she downs a bottle of schnapps. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so you live listeners, Harvin and I one year, Garvin Harrison, no, Harrison was the next day. No. Oh, yeah, next he, day, yeah. He was not drinking with us, right. but we did, we were playing poker and doing uh, schnapps. We mixed a bunch of schnapps together. It was like apple pucker. Butterscotch schnapps and some other schnapps. Yeah, it was like a caramel oh, apple shot. Yeah, but it was like full glasses shot. of it. Yeah. <laughs> and not only did like I drank maybe a third of mine. Garvin's wife drank all of hers. Yeah, the rest of mine, and I think half of his. Well, because I'm diabetic. I mean, I can't drink that much sugar. Were di- I don't think we knew you were diabetic at that point. Or I don't you? know, dude. It was close. Were, were you diabetic before you got your apartment? Don't make me think. Okay. <laughs> But either way, she, she, you just bring up schnapps, and she's just like, oh, God. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Okay, well, um, I think that's it. I think that's the show. Let's jump into win-fail. Women wrestlers aren't getting paid. Why do you do a job? Here is your win. You do any <laughs> job, any job. And fail. Is to fucking get paid. Of the week. Joe. Your win of the week. Um, since I already know what Nick's win of the week is, I'm gonna skip that, and I'm going to say uh, Kevin Owens just destroying C.J. Parker and then Sami Zayn. Um, I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. Kill Owens, kill. Fight Owens, fight. Nick, what's your win of the week? 
uh, still got to be Balor's entrance. I, I, you know what? I think after this show tonight, I'm gonna rewatch it. Oh, do it! That was amazing. Kevin, your win of the week. My win of the week is Ziggler getting the title back. Um, now can he hold it? But I'm glad they're give, at least giving him another shot. It's it's deserved. So you know, let's hope we can do something with it because that's always the question from here, and it's been the question with him for a while. But if he can, I mean, that that proves bigger things are ahead. So I, I really hope he makes the most of this. And um, fucking do something, Ziggler. You're such a good talent. Just make it happen. Make it happen. Um, yeah, for me, my my win is going to go to NXT. Overall, I thought NXT TakeOver was, was very good. Um, again, I know we didn't really talk about the build towards NXT, but... Uh, thankfully, I watched a lot of it marathon style the last four or five weeks, and uh, I thought that really assisted me <laughs> in in watching the in watching the special event. So, uh, definitely a lot of love to NXT. Also, a lot of love to Lucha Underground. I know there's a lot of shit to c- complain about for WWE, but there's so much going on outside of that, like NXT, like Lucha Underground. L- Especially all the vibes, the positive vibes coming out of the TNA Destination America agreement. There's a lot of cool stuff to be, uh, uh, you know, thankful for as far as wrestling goes. Uh, from the live chat, we've got, um, we've got NXT and Lucha Underground, the ending to our evolution, uh, Sami Zayn finally winning the big one, which is awesome. Uh, ROH Tag Wars, NXT, Our Evolution, the ladder match, and the TLC match at TLC. Zayn finally winning the big match. Uh, Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens feud for the ne- for the NXT title. That's what they're building right now, which is really cool. Uh, Nick attempting to keep the TLC chat focused on positives rather than negatives. I'm bored with negativity. So thank you, Nick. For keeping the the live chat for pay per views uh, positive, you are entirely welcome, Blue. Yeah, I I think you're my new favorite uh, hooligan now. It, it's it, it's an especially easy contest since Lou's leaving us. <laughs> I, yeah, Lou. Lou is my fail of the week, uh, but we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Muhammad Fayez Danielle said, uh, Garvin mentioned that a child who just started wrestling said his favorite wrestler is Goldust. Yeah, my nephew. My nephew's <laughs> favorite wrestler is Goldust. Uh, <laughs> Why does crazy. he think of Stardust? I don't know. Crazy. Crazy stuff. Uh, NXT's women's cha- championship match. There's a lot. There was a lot of, uh, stuff that happened this week to be, uh, to be happy about for sure. Especially from the NXT pay per view. From the TLC pay per view, from Lucha Underground, all that stuff. Fails though. Let's get into the fails of the week. Joe, your fail of the week. Uh, my fail of the week is exploding TVs with much way too thick cabling. Uh, that was a terrible ending to the pay per view, uh, despite the match being a good pay- a good match. Uh, it just put a damper on the whole whole thing. Nick, your fail of the week. There's a few I could pick from. Um, the easy one, I think, is Raw as Jericho. Maybe I just get oversaturated with Jericho content with his podcast, but I I could easily do without Jericho for another six months. Then and don't listen to his podcast. Yeah, yeah, I I'm getting that. I'm a joke right have there. <laughs> I might unsubscribe like I did with Austin's. See, I unsubscribed I, from Jr. I can't listen to Jr. anymore. Interesting. Yeah. I subscribed from Roddy Piper this week because <laughs> that guy is awful to listen to. <laughs> I haven't even tried. To... No. <laughs> well, Incidentally, I do want to listen to Austin, but I I don't know. I I can only listen to so many weeks of him rambling and rambling without bringing on guests to break up the monotony. So, yeah. One of these times, he's gonna have Hershey the Wonder Dog on. <laughs> Like a two-hour podcast, it's going to be him talking to himself, like he talked to the Loch Ness monster. I think I would resubscribe for that. That Loch Ness monster episode was fantastic. 
<laughs> Austin versus the Fly was amazing. That was also another good one. Those those two podcasts is where he was batshit crazy, and uh, it, those were awesome. Cause stamps dot com. Help me. The penis pills. Help me out. Was, <laughs> was he still getting his swell on? <laughs> He's always getting his swell on. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> it depends on the context. Okay. I I do have another one, and it's just... I don't know what people are doing with the New Day. Because mm. it, it, it sounds like there's either a muted reaction or people are booing it. And when they're booing it, they're just chanting CM Punk and NXT. Which is the weirdest fucking shit because Biggie and Xavier Woods are from NXT. I, I you, you can't for one thing, but when the WWE gives you that, you 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 shit on it. I I, I don't. Wait, 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 weren't they FCW? They never actually made it to NXT. No. No, Biggie was NXT champion. Biggie, okay. Yeah, Xavier was Woods. NXT. Okay, I wasn't was sure. If he, like right after he left, they made the transition. No, no, they they weren't the, like the same time as Damian Sandow and those guys. Okay. They they did spend time on NXT. Yeah, I I could be wrong, but I think it was Big E versus um, Bo Dallas for the NXT Championship. I think that was the the main story. But this is all before the network t- took over. Yeah, Big E took the title from Seth Rollins, and then Bo Dallas took the title from Big E. Which I I still think was a shitty way to end that match. Yeah, I mean overall, Nick, I, I'm I'm with you. Uh, I I want to see good things from the new day or a new day or whatever, but um, it seems like overly exaggerated. Like I just want them to wrestle and talk the way that they normally would. Like um, Kingston. I think was great on commentary, but they're just playing up like this new tempo as far as how they're talking, uh, this new accent almost, and I don't want that. I just want them to be where they should be, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah, there, there's definitely a very fine line where to tread where what they're doing works and then where it goes off into sideshow freak theater that really should not be if for me personally i i've been entertained i don't think they cross that line and it's 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 weird because audiences seem to be giving mixed signals because yeah the the audio if it's not muted you can hear boos and chants against them oh yeah but then you see people standing up and reacting to them Positively. Oh, I, I, I will, so, I will say the, the, the Cleveland crowd for TLC was very anti New Day. They were very pro Gold Dust and Stardust. Yeah, I, I, I didn't watch the kickoff match, so I can't say for sure what would have gone on then. Yeah. But like Raw the next night, I definitely saw a lot of people get up, stand up when they came out. A lot of people clapping along with the theme. A lot of people chanting back New Day at, at whoever chanted back at them. So I I don't get it. It's just a lot of mixed signals, and I, I really wish people would make up their minds as to what they thought about this. Okay. Um, I don't remember who I left off with. Did I cue everyone? I think you missed Kevin. Kevin? Yeah, Kevin? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, no, I got it. I was like blind for a second. Okay. Um, are we on win or fail? Fail, fail, <laughs> fail of the week. Fail, that's right, because my win was singular. Fail ascension. Sorry, uh, fail ascension. I, I you, you can't go that like blatantly LOD and be okay with that when you haven't proven jack shit. Yeah. So now that I fucked up the whole segment, just like move on. Okay. Um. My fail of the week is uh, the internet's inability to let people like what they like and say what they want to say. Um, and I know overly we've been very aggressive with like, you know, if you're anti this, like, don't don't center on that, like center on things that are positive, like things that you like. And for me, I was very positive about NXT, and I got a lot of hate 
by other uh, podcasts and other like wrestling news uh, sites that were anti me being positive, especially for NXT. Like I was looking at NXT like, hey, what if we stopped covering Raw? What if we stopped covering the lame WWE and just covered NXT? And TNA and Lucha Underground, like, what would what would people think if we did that? And I got a lot of negative hate because of that, because it's like, well, NXT is WWE. Well, it's like, dude, just let me let me like what I like. Let me like what is interesting, what is overly, f- you know, just entertaining. Raw is not entertaining. TLC as a whole is not entertaining. NXT Takeover though is entertaining. So what is the what is the problem with you know me liking NXT? Eat it. All right. Fuck those guys. Yeah, fuck those guys. Um. All right. From the live chat, I'm scrolling through. I'm trying to find fails because we've gone very fucking long on this segment. Uh. You're welcome. Fail. Uh, I'm looking for the keyword fail here. So fuck it. We lost track of them. You have no fails, assholes. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> well, no fail. Uh, the Ascension's vignettes for the upcoming debut. Why would they rip off the Legion of Doom? Seriously? It's vignettes, not vignettes. I can say it however I want to. I can like whoever <laughs> I want to. Don't tear me down, <laughs> IWC. <laughs> <laughs> Stop making fun of Garvin's accent. (laughs) Uh, Fail. I wish Eric Rowan could have beaten Big Show at TLC. I'm with you there. Wait, 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 the fail is wishing it, or the fail is that it didn't happen? It didn't happen. Okay. Uh, Why did Big Show win? Why was Big Show such a significant part to Raw? That's, That's another fail. Like, what the fuck, guy? Uh, well, they're still paying him back for his show. They're still paying him back from when WWE had that that place called the World that in like Niagara Falls or whatever. And for one WrestleMania, Big Show had to go around like he was there as like the representative, and he was like eating people's like chicken wings and shit. They're still paying him for that embarrassing thing. This is compensation for making him cry on TV. No, I think he did that of his own accord. That <laughs> <laughs> just happened, man. Uh, fail. Balls. Fail. Uh, Kofi's ability... I'm sorry. Kofi's rhyming ability. Dude has negative five-star rap skills. Uh, I'm I'm agreeing with that. Like, <laughs> Again, like... Garvin's got good rap skills. I do. And I don't understand why... Not to get into the racist stereotype, but, like, why are they pushing the New Day into this direction where, like, Kofi is doing, like, rhymes? Like, why don't, just, why don't you just give Kofi the mic to say what he wants to say? Why has he got to say it that way? I don't know. Uh, thinks it's funny. Fail. Fuck the other podcast if they don't like it. I agree with that. I don't know what it's in reference to, but I agree. Um, what, that we're taking a break? Are we? Well, for live shows. Yeah, fail to David Gilbert from <laughs> Talk TNA <laughs> Podcast for cryptically shitting on us for taking two weeks off for a live show because we want to spend time with our families. Fuck that yeah. guy. Yeah, Dave, yeah. I'm going to say, say it now. <laughs> We've been doing this longer than you have, and it's been a formula that works. So maybe we're going to take the Vince Russo idea and change up the formula that doesn't work. I don't know. I'm babbling now. <laughs> this is your chance to step up and grab that brass ring, okay? <laughs> but yeah. This, the, you know how you want TNA and WWE and everybody to have, like, that three-month break, like you said on your podcast? This is our we're break. We're taking two weeks. This two is our break, man. weeks. <laughs> two weeks. And really, I get three because, well, I got to go to – out of town for work, but still, <laughs> uh, it's not three months, man. Come yeah. on. All right, final thoughts, Joe. You yeah. got a final thought? Or oh, actually, I'm first. sorry. Let me let me preface this with shots. Okay. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah. Again, from the bottle for Ooh. anyone that is wondering. We can tell you're you're, you're getting uh, Kevin drunk. I can't use the official name of it, but. Thank you. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, mine's kind of a bummer. Uh, I want to know who the third celebrity is who's uh, passing because we just Detroit area just lost uh, news anchor, legendary news anchor Bill Bonds, who uh, it was rumored that Will he was the inspiration for Will Ferrell's Anchorman. Uh, and I think they actually went over to a different Detroit news uh, broadcaster named Mort Krim. Regardless, uh, Bill Bonds died. It's uh, it's kind of a bummer. And then the guy who did. Uh, Shit, now I lost it. Uh, Bridewell, the guy who did the uh, Clifford the Big Red Dog books, wrote and drew them. He died really? today. He just oh, died. Yeah. No shit. Oh, my God. We live in a world without Clifford? No, the oh. books are still going to be published. But, but yeah, the guy who created them. Yep. Norman, Norman uh, Bridewell. You got to use the final thoughts for positive thinking, not this all negative stuff. Especially when we're drinking, man. <laughs> I'm gonna cry myself to sleep now. Yeah. First, first we have Deuce Loosely say, or no, no, sorry, not Deuce Loosely. <laughs> Lou, Lou saying that he's done. He's not gonna listen to any more live shows because he's gonna do his own podcast shit. Fuck, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lou. Cool. I got, I, I got a positive. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I got a positive. Mickey James is still fucking hot, man. Hmm. I mean, I mean, all I got to do is Google this shit. And God, Lord, that woman is fine. You need me to resend you her uh, her porn pics? No, 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 no. I got that on lockdown, man. <laughs> <laughs> AKA his wife would be pissed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other final thoughts? This is a good drunk show. This is, I think, better than last year's drunk show. I don't remember last year's drunk show. That's probably Harrison good... hosted. Garvin, so... I can tell you for a fact, you were definitely more hammered than last year. Definitely, definitely, because I, I, I looked at you, Kevin, as an example that I had to fulfill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to aspire to. That's a scary. And the next thought. year, I'm aspiring to have Kevin's technical his computer knowledge uh and i'm just kidding that'd be that'd be like stepping myself in the dick (laughs) 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 and those not in the know kevin is the most untechnical technological uh person in the world yes that is 100 percent correct so i still want to know why your wife's uh google account is on your computer uh, because i'm too lazy to fix it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> um okay so final thoughts f- anyone else today's okay so <laughs> <laughs> final thoughts for me standing final thought by the way um i i do want to say that um we have heard uh, Dave Gilbert's uh, attacks against us from Talk to Any Podcast. We will be releasing two new episodes over the break, but they will not be live. One will be TNA-centric. The other one will be most likely, I mean, I don't think we've decided yet, but most likely uh, Ask FTW-centric. So just responding to Ask FTW-style questions or topics. Um, Yeah. But this is the final new uh, live show i guess of uh 2014 we'll be back in full force on tuesday january 6th where we will be giving our 2014 year interview um we'll also be previewing uh the first ever impact on destination america maybe talk some njpw i know that's that's uh, a thing worth talking about as far as global force wrestling uh, we'll probably talk about that a little bit. At least Nick and I. I think Nick and I will be the only ones that watch. I really want to see JR and Stryker work together or, or yeah, attempt to. Uh, so if you that haven't heard... That was a Yeah, it was. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, if you haven't heard already, uh, it's going to be uh, Matt Stryker and JR, which should be pretty cool uh, overall, I think. 
you know, just knowing what Matt Stryker has done in Lucha Underground, um, JR, we know what he can do. So uh, I think that'd be a, a really cool thing to watch. I don't really have any other final thoughts, so. <laughs> that was a lot of final thoughts, man. I yeah. think we're done. Yeah, I think that was good. Um, and that's the show. You can go check out FTWPodcast.com for more information about us and how to get involved in the future. And join us live each and every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern on FTWLive.com. For myself, Joe, Nick, Kevin... And everyone in the live chat, thanks for listening and joining in on the conversation. We'll see you next year. Cheers. Peace in the Middle East. Titties? Titties?